Our next guest is in the studio. We've been talking about public finance management for a while, and it's good that this constitution has actually opened up that space of public finance management and conversations in the country are now uh, on how we are managing our public finances. One office that's created and placed centrally in public finance management is that of the controller of budgets. The current holder of that office is CPA Dr. Margaret Nyakango. She's in the situation. Good morning, Dr. Nyakango. Good morning, Eric. Welcome to the hot seat of the Situation Room. Thank you very much for having me. Karibu sana. Siti, mm -hmm. you have the day's proverb. I do. Mm -hmm. And proverbs for the whole of this week ending tomorrow uh, from the country of Libya. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like the sparrow, he wanted to imitate the pigeon's walk, but lost his own. Mm. Like the sparrow... He wanted to imitate the pigeon's walk. He wanted to imitate the pigeon's walk. Yes, but lost his own. Dr. Nakango is giving you that look of... <laughs> okay, pigeon's yeah. walk, sparrow, surely. Lost own. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you understand from that proverb? Um, Start with your just direct translation of what it's saying. Okay, it's like... Uh, People have different strengths, and so if you try to copy your, your neighbor or your friend, you may not succeed where they have succeeded. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at least on the, from just hearing it, that is what I can think of. Yes. It's, so don't copy. Don't copy. Don't yes. copy what others are doing. Yes. You are original the way you are. You are unique. You stick to your lane and you will actually move faster. Right. Okay. That's so you agree point. with me? Yeah, it sounds <laughs> it sounds reasonable. Yes. This is like a very reasonable translation and yes. interpretation of that proverb. Yes. But CT is the Mwalimu. CT? Mm hmm. Uh -huh. Controller of budget or a max ngapi? On a scale of 1 to 10, mm. 10 being the maximum number of marks you can actually get you've gotten 10 when we ask for your interpretation <laughs> you cannot possibly be wrong because that is how the proverb resonates with you yes thank you but pigeons play a very very important role in uh, the culture of libyans uh, they're also into falconry they they are birds they it's a culture where birds have very specific roles yes there are those that are bred for purposes of eating. Right. There are those that are bred for purposes of entertainment, pastime. Mm. So mm. their culture is actually very rich in birds. So when you have a proverb, the proverb often points you to a, a country's culture mm -hmm. or the mention of animals. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, you don't hear proverbs dealing with giraffes and elephants coming from the UK or the, <laughs> or the US. <laughs> no? And neither do you hear probably kangaroos coming from Africa. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> <laughs> yes. It depends on where you come from depends on and what's around you. Yes. Okay. Now, the Constitution of Kenya 2010, you know, we call it the very progressive constitution, one of the most progressive constitutions in this ge of this generation in the world, has created constitutional commissions and independent offices. Right. One of those is the controller of budgets. Now, please introduce us to this Office of Control of Budget, how it's established in law and functions and roles. Thank you very much, Eric. The Office of the Control of Budget uh, was created, rather is created, under Article 228 of the Constitution of Kenya. You will observe that immediately after 228, 229 creates the office of the Auditor General. Yes. There's a bit of history to that. Um, from our colonial uh, history, we had the office of the Controller and Auditor General. So the two offices were together. Mm. So for a long time, the mm. controllership was under a department called the Exchequer. And then the, the other department of audit was audit. So the whole office was exchequer and audit. Mm. But the committee of experts, having looked at the operations of that combined office, felt like 
there was a lacuna in terms of reporting on budget implementation. Mm. It was also felt that auditing coming at the tail end of the expenditure was missing out on what is happening in between. Not to mention that audits took rather long yeah. to come along. So the Committee of Experts then created the Office of the Control of Budget to take care of those roles that they felt were not coming out in the combined setup. And they created nine roles, and uh, I'll be going through them. Mm -hmm. But that is the history, and uh, the Auditor General still continues as an independent office, and uh, then the control of budget is another uh, independent mm -hmm. office. Mm -hmm. Office, not commission. Office. We are not called commissions. It's an independent we, office. Independent office. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Okay. I am the second in the lineup. There was one uh, who did the first eight years, and I'm supposed to do another eight years. I'm on the fourth. You're halfway eight. through your term. Mm. Yes. Mm. Yeah, almost mm. done. What halfway. are those seven functions? Yes. Now, the functions then that uh, were not coming through with in the combined office, mm. one is oversight. And by oversight, we are talking about uh, like overseeing how budgets are being executed from the time the budgets are prepared mm. all the way to when the financial statements are prepared, what happens in between. So my office does that through uh, monitoring how the budget implementation is being done, approving withdrawals mm -hmm. under Articles 204, 206, and 207. Mm -hmm. What these articles talk about is how the money moves from the consolidated fund, from the equalization fund, and from the county revenue fund. So there is a process of how the funds move. So to provide that oversight, I sign off each and every withdrawal from the consolidated fund to these other accounts mm -hmm. to ensure that they are within the law mm -hmm. before the funds are released. So that's one of them. Mm -hmm. Then there is the controlling role. And in the controlling role, I keep monitoring, comparing what is in the Appropriation Act vis-a-vis -vis what is being reported back. And in my quarterly reports, I give that status. You will be seeing a lot of times we are talking of absorption rates. Yeah. So we are comparing what the targets were vis-a-vis -vis what is actually happening. Then, incidental to uh, the oversight and the controlling, I report. Mm -hmm. And this is a mandate of reporting to Parliament because Parliament is my boss. Mm -hmm. I don't have any other boss. So, at the end of every quarter, I collect data from all the spending entities, both for national and county governments. Mm. And I compile these the quarterly reports and submit them to Parliament mm -hmm. before I can make them public to anybody else. Other than that, I have an advisory role. Mm. I advise all governments, both national and county, on the budget making process, following the PFM Act and the Constitution, following the provisions of prudent transparency and accountability and uh, tell them what is expected of them, even as I report on an ongoing basis. Mm -hmm. Incidental to these roles is an investigation role. Every so often, you know, things may go wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, people either don't do the right thing mm -hmm. or they do the right thing in the wrong way. And uh, as far as budget implementation is concerned, my office will investigate either on our, our own mm. or sometimes we get complaints from the public 
or other institutions and we investigate that is also our role now disputes arise you know especially in the county governments we have the county assembly yep. and then we have the executive and every so often there are misunderstandings especially relating to budget allocations where the projects are mm. and uh, my office then has the mandate of mediating mm. yeah so i do conciliation negotiations and I ensure that the parties come to an understanding so that they can move on you may have heard that sometimes the budget is not even passed yep. because of those disputes mm -hmm. so i have that role other than that i do public sensitization either i go out to the people uh, but sensitization takes place all the time what i'm doing right now is public sensitization when my reports come out we partner with the press the print media uh, tv uh, i mean all all the media and uh, ensure that the message gets out mm. that's what the people um, are reading out there mm -hmm. so then i have a monitoring role and monitoring is incidental to the reporting function yeah as i said before um we receive uh, information that is self-reported from the spending entities. So what we do every so often is to actually go out to the ground. So I send my teams mm. out there to the counties and uh, they go to the sites where projects have been reported mm. and we, we assess, we evaluate whether the figures we've been given agree with what we are seeing on the ground okay other than that we also monitor processes mm. for instance lately we have been monitoring the program based budget ensuring that the outcomes that are reflected in the budgets are being adhered to and or they can be achieved at the end of the day and uh, Lastly, uh, of the main mandates is to enforce budget ceilings. Mm. We know that in national government, um, budget ceilings uh, are passed by parliament. Mm. And in the other counties, they are passed by the county assemblies uh, before the budgets can become operational. Then they become an act, an mm. appropriation act. It is the role of my office to ensure that they keep within those limits. So those are like, there is a ceiling to everything. Mm. And my office then, while reporting, we ensure that those limits are being kept. Also, when they make their requisitions, we ensure that they are within those limits. So those are the nine key roles. Can you give us an example of a budget ceiling? Yes. Give us an example of... Okay. One example, for instance, mm. is that um, they must budget 30% of the entire budget to development mm -hmm. so when they are budgeting i must make sure that they have allocated now when it comes to spending that's another story yeah. at the point of budgeting i must make sure that 30 percent has been allocated to development mm. then when i report on a quarterly basis i ensure that I am checking the monitoring the progress of the 30 percent mm. 70 percent is on Recurrent. recurrent now of the 70 percent recurrent no more than 35 percent should go to personal emoluments that is salaries and wages mm -hmm. so again that is a ceiling that we keep reporting on there's a lot of default <laughs> <laughs> but that's a story for another day uh so uh the I was giving you one so you're one able of the to see at that point when the budget is being made that the 70 percent that's been allocated to recurrent expenditure yes 35 percent no more than 35 percent will go to personal emoluments right the salaries mm -hmm. wages does it also include pension no the yeah it, you know the salary is gross mm. so out of 
the 70 percent even the pension is in even whatever else even house allowance you know all those Everything components that. that make the gross pay mm -hmm. yes okay Dr. Nyakango, you talk about um, Parliament having the final say in then what you will then go ahead and release. Yes. Is it at all possible that somebody apart from Parliament would make a demand on the Office of the Control of Budget for money to be released for something and then you would go ahead and acquiesce to that? Well, it is not as simple as that, but the law provides under Article 223 of the Constitution, that something can come up that was not foreseen mm -hmm. and has not been budgeted for. Mm -hmm. In which case, then, the spending entity will approach the Cabinet Secretary for Finance. Mm -hmm. That is the only one who has that authority. And explain what this matter is mm -hmm. that was not budgeted for and needs to be financed. Mm -hmm. So... Once the cabinet secretary gives that approval, the spending entity must ensure that they provide details of this spending within two months mm -hmm. to parliament so that parliament can pick up that particular aspect of the spending and allow it to be appropriated. Mm -hmm. Now, we have what we call supplementary appropriation. Mm -hmm. So ab about midway through the year that is december we have the first supplementary and then later um towards the end of the financial year again we'll have supplementary too so it is at these times that any spending that may have been done mm -hmm. under article 223 is then discussed in parliament and allowed to go under the supplementary okay so once the parliament approves the supplementary budget then that particular spending now becomes part of mm. the budget mm -hmm. yes so it's regularized it is regularized yes and the only so thing that you need now for you to approve the withdrawal of those funds is this application by the cs treasury yes mm. the, the spending entity mm. will apply to the cs treasury and the cs treasury will approve and then send me that information and say you can approve mm -hmm. this withdrawal pending parliamentary regularization. Mm. So then it is not possible for money to be spent at the national or county level without your approval. That's right. Okay. Yes. So if a situation has arisen whereby, you know, there's not enough as, and we say that money has been spent at this level at this level mm. it is not and forgive me if i'm putting words in your mouth but it is not likely that money would have been spent at the national level or at the county level had it not gone through approval by the controller of budget okay but there is a caveat to that okay, okay. <laughs> now we have monies that are not received in the consolidated fund. Mm -hmm. Yes. We have, for instance, the road development levy mm. that is not uh, received in the consolidated fund. We have the railway development levy. We have uh, a lot of grants and loans mm. that are not banked in the consolidated fund. Where do they go? Uh, they are spent directly with the authority of the National Treasury. Okay. Spent directly. By yes. They, now, for this specific, like the funds I'm telling you, mm. there would usually be an act that governs that particular funding. The Railway Development Fund. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you will find that the 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 cs national treasury and the ps national treasury are mentioned in that particular law yeah so it will be like a, a specific law mm. so you'll find for instance that the money that is spent by kenya roads board mm. for instance doesn't go through my office okay yes. so this is like because we see those signs on the roads yes this road has been maintained by the 
fuel levy fuel yeah. levy yes so that levy we pay it when we are consuming yes. fuel at the point of purchase mm. that money goes straight to the national treasury it goes straight to the national treasury and mm. to the roads boards and then the roads board through yeah. of course the roads ministry yes without going through the control of budget but but so as i was finishing mm -hmm. was to say that as long as the funds have been received in the consolidated fund nothing will go out without going through my office okay yes do we have an idea as to how much money is collected in this road development levy railway and do we have audited details of how it is it's that it's spent and do you have a say in any other detail it doesn't come to you yes but you are the control of budget and these are national functions uh all those details are on the national treasury website mm. yes they prepare financial statements yes on those funds that they handle directly mm. and uh they, they have no uh responsibility so to say to report that to me mm. but i can always go back to the website and also see them the way other citizens see them is there a reason so, why this doesn't come through your office the, there is no reason but that is that is the law as it is now you see these are they are called specific funds mm. and now if you go to the pfm the public finance management act you will see that for those special funds it is the national treasury that is responsible for them we've been asking we've been following and saying if the constitution says that all receipts to government need to be received in the consolidated fund and then spent why is it that then these funds have continued to operate outside, outside the system the yes you i think it's a subject you have asked the question that i was asking yeah. yes you see the when we hear of budgets and we hear of expenditure and we hear of spending i personally am a little confused because i actually don't know how exactly do you spend because you say it has to pass through your office please just walk us through money leaves consolidated fund for example it goes to the county how does it go i know it isn't put on a donkey and it doesn't walk to the various counties right. that, that much i know <laughs> so what happens it's going okay it has arrived at the county this account that the county has when they want to spend how do you monitor this and how do you know that this money is actually being put to the use or when it gets to the county at that level then you're not involved how does all this work okay it's it's very simple today i'm i'm, I'm gonna break it down for you mm -hmm. so what happens is that um the money that is in the consolidated fund is of course where what we have budgeted for at the very beginning they're just figures you know the mm. money is just in figures mm. so we are talking about say the budget 3.67 million for 23 24 financial year yes so as it is now those are just figures there is no money to it mm. what does that mean it means that we must start collecting revenue there are two ways in which we get money into the consolidated fund. Well, mostly. Mm. We borrow or we, we make our revenue. We raise taxes. Now, the Finance Act shows us all those ways that we shall use to collect the money that will go to the consolidated fund. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah. Then, on the other side, we have the spending aspect and so each spending entity has a spending plan mm. which like i said the current law is program based budgeting mm -hmm. so you must have certain outcomes then you break them down into outputs and then into activities and then you cost those activities so that's what gives you your budget right now we have the national government and we have the county government so you've heard that they'll usually be a division of revenue act yes so in under that division of revenue act the counties will be given a certain portion mm, 385 billion yes 385 mm -hmm. for instance the current year and then the balance the trillions of course you know about uh, the national government mm. of the national government trillions 
about 70% will go to public debt. Mm -hmm. And then the 30% will be on both development and recurrent. Yes. Then in the counties, each particular county is a government. It's a fully fledged government. Mm. And each, once they know how much they'll get from the equitable share, they also have a portion that they raise from own source revenue. So they do have their own mini tax system mm -hmm. within the county mm. and they raise own source revenue. You may also have read about that. Yes. Mm -hmm. So those two added together form the budget, the ins and outs of the county. Mm. So let's look at how the money moves. For the national government, they'll come with the requisitions for each ministry and these ministries have what we call a disbursement plan. The ministries have state corporations and sagas under them, but I don't deal directly with the state corporations. So you will find uh, which state corporation can we think of, uh, which is under a ministry. Don't let's take KRA. Let's take KRA. KRA is under the National Treasury. The National Treasury. <laughs> so when KRA needs funds to spend, they put a request to the National Treasury. Mm -hmm. And then the National Treasury also picks another state corporation, let's say Kenya National Bureau of Statistics, mm -hmm. from economic planning. Mm -hmm. They will aggregate those mm -hmm. and they'll come to my office and tell me, we need to make these transfers to, this, to these two entities. But it will come as a National Treasury request. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. The parent ministry. The parent ministry. Okay. I, I, I give only to the parent ministry. Mm -hmm. So I'll sign off what is called a withdrawal. The meaning of the withdrawal is that that proportion of funds then moves from the consolidated fund mm. to the national treasury account. Okay. And all this is done on the IFMIS platform. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That mm -hmm. is where the, the records are ah. kept that's where the movement movements are being done mm -hmm. so and once i sign and you're in charge of IFMIS. It, the national treasury is in charge of IFMIS. but all these records are on the financial system mm -hmm. but it gets a bit more is your signature electronic or is your signature manual right now it is purely manual so it's brought to you you sign yes and then that initiates now withdrawal a from movement. the consolidated fund through IFMIS yes. into the National Treasury's account. Yes. And the, the, the real cash mm. is moved by the Central Bank of Kenya because they get a copy of what I sign. So what I sign is like a check. Mm. Mm -hmm. It is delivered to the Central Bank of Kenya. Mm. And they are told the controller has approved so much. So in terms of the banking the real cash now moves to to the yeah, national an treasury account, account. account. Okay. now once it moves there i no longer have any business to do with it okay now the accounting officer of the national treasury takes over the money is now in their account these are the principles so the they, they they first of all they would start by making transfers what is called tra transfers are not payments they are just transferring to the state corporations and the sagas, mm -hmm. who will also be having their own accounting officer, mm -hmm. and they'll now make the real payments. Okay. So National Treasury PS transfers to KRA. Yes. Planning PS. Well, now we only have one PS. Yes. Transfers to the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics. Yes. Those two now receive their money. Yes. The boss at KRA now starts paying yes for now consumption salaries and whatever development yes and the boss at knbs makes the payment right all that could not have happened had the controller of budget not authorized the first transfer from the consolidated fund mm -hmm. to right. the national treasury account. right okay. so okay. so how then do i monitor this mm -hmm. now every end of quarter just before the quarter ends i send out templates to each of the spending entities 
and I tell them I want a return of what you spend and how you spend it. So they send me these returns. But I don't just trust them on the face of it. Mm. I now go to IFMIS. Why ever not? Mm. Very, very wise. I go to IFMIS. <laughs> mm. And I say, oh, you are saying you paid this. The transactions are all on, on IFMIS. So what my, what my officers are busy doing is confirming. Counter-checking. Yes. That what they are giving us is actually on IFMIS. Okay. Once we find them, mm. we then compile the quarterly report. Mm -hmm. And that is what you read. Okay. Yes. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day.